and of Clevis, the fortunate fourth wife of Henry VIII. In the annals of English history, Henry VIII conjures images of a robust, capricious monarch who took six wives, forever altering the country's religious and political landscape. While his marriages to Catherine of Aragon, and Bullen, and Jane Seymour are well known, his union with Anne of Clevis is often overshadowed. However, Anne of Clevis, the fourth wife of Henry VIII, had a unique and intriguing story marked by good fortune and a remarkable resilience that set her apart from her ill-fated predecessors. This is her story. Chapter 1 The Political Landscape The year was 1539, and England was in a state of flux. Henry VIII, King of England since 1509, had grown increasingly dissatisfied with his marriage to Anne of Clevy's predecessor, Anne Bullen. The desire for a male heir consumed him, and he believed that Anne of Clevis, the sister of a powerful German ruler, offered the political alliance and potential offspring he desperately sought. Anne of Clevis hailed from the Duchy of Clevis, part of the Holy Roman Empire, and was the daughter of John III, Duke of Clevis, and Maria of Eulichburg. Born on September 22, 1515, in Dusseldorf, and was a young and relatively unknown noblewoman when her name was first mentioned in the context of a royal marriage. Henry's chief minister, Thomas Cromwell, who had orchestrated the king's divorce from Catherine of Aragon and subsequent marriage to Anne Bullen, saw Anne of Clevis as an opportunity to strengthen England's ties with the Protestant princes of Germany and create a formidable alliance against the Catholic Habsburgs. Chapter 2 The Meeting to determine if Anne of Clevis was a suitable bride for Henry, a delegation of English envoys, including the renowned portraitist Hans Holbein the Younger, was dispatched to Clevis. Their mission was to meet Anne, assess her physical appearance, and return with a portrait that would allow Henry to make an informed decision. Holbein's portrait of Anne, which survives today, presented her as an attractive and regal young woman with delicate features. However, Anne's arrival in England in December 1539 made it clear that the portrait had flattered her considerably. The discrepancy between the painted image and Anne's appearance would later prove to be a pivotal factor in the unfolding drama of her marriage to Henry. Chapter 3 The Marriage Contract On January 6, 1540, Anne of Clevis and Henry VIII were married at the Palace of Placentia in Greenwich. It was a grand and lavish affair, as befitting a royal wedding. However, the ceremony was overshadowed by Henry's reaction to his new bride. As Henry beheld Anne for the first time, he was reportedly taken aback by her appearance. He had expected a radiant beauty, as depicted in Holbein's portrait, but Anne was, by all accounts, unremarkable in his eyes. Her fair complexion and plump figure did not meet the king's aesthetic preferences. Henry's disappointment was palpable, and he would later describe Anne as a Flanders mare. Despite his initial reservations, Henry went through with the marriage, perhaps realizing the political importance of the alliance with Anne's brother, William, Duke of Clevis. The marriage contract had already been signed, and the alliance was too crucial to be abandoned solely due to personal preference. Chapter 4 The Unconsummated Marriage Following their wedding, Henry and Anne retired to their chambers at Hampton Court Palace. It was here that the true extent of Henry's dissatisfaction became apparent. Historians speculate that Henry might have been impotent or afflicted by a medical condition preventing consummation. Anne's appearance might have repelled him, as he claimed. Whatever the reason, the marriage remained unconsummated causing immense frustration and disappointment for the king. Henry complained to his confidants about Anne's lack of physical appeal, and it soon became clear that he desired an annulment. Chapter 5 The Annulment Henry VIII turned to his trusted adviser, Thomas Cromwell, in his quest to annul his marriage to Anne of Clevis. Cromwell, who had orchestrated Anne Bullen's downfall and Anne of Clevis' arrival in England, now faced the challenging task of undoing the marriage he had once championed. Cromwell's argument for annulment rested because Anne was not as attractive as she had been portrayed in her portrait, 
and Henry could not bring himself to consummate the marriage. Despite the marital discord, he also emphasized the political necessity of maintaining peace with Anne's brother, the Duke of Cleves. To his credit, and cooperated fully with the annulment process. She expressed her willingness to accept a peaceful separation, recognizing the importance of maintaining the amicable relations between England and the Duchy of Cleves. Anne's compliance and diplomatic skills were crucial in the smooth annulment proceedings. On July 9, 1540, after just six months of marriage, Henry VIII and Anne of Cleves were formally and mutually divorced and was given a generous settlement, which included Hever Castle, the former home of Anne Bullen, Richmond Palace, and a substantial annual income. She was also declared the sister of the king's beloved friend, a prestigious title that allowed her to retain her royal status and position at court. Chapter 6 Life After Divorce Following her divorce from Henry, Anne of Cleves embarked on a life of relative independence and prosperity in England. She enjoyed her newfound wealth and properties, spending much of her time at Richmond Palace, establishing a comfortable and cultured court. Her love for music, art, and learning made her a patron of the arts and remained well-liked by the English nobility. Anne's relationship with Henry remained surprisingly amicable after their divorce. She was often invited to court and treated with respect and courtesy. Henry called her sister Anne and even occasionally visited her. Anne, for her part, continued to support the political alliance between England and the Duchy of Cleves. Chapter 7 The Death of Henry VIII and Anne's Later Years 1547 King Henry VIII passed away, leaving a turbulent legacy in a young heir, Edward VI. Anne of Cleves' connection to the English court shifted with Henry's death. Her former stepdaughter, Mary I, ascended the throne in 1553, and then played a role in Mary's marriage to Philip II of Spain, further strengthening England's ties with continental Europe. And lived a comfortable and prosperous life during the reigns of Mary and her successor, Elizabeth I. She resided mainly at Chelsea Old Manor, a beautiful residence along the banks of the Thames. Here, and enjoyed her love of gardening, and she even introduced a variety of new vegetables to England, including the red cabbage. As the years passed, and became a respected elder stateswoman, offering counsel and support to her stepdaughter Mary in the future Queen Elizabeth. She witnessed the religious turmoil that characterized the period, with England oscillating between Protestantism and Catholicism but navigating the shifting tides with grace and prudence. Chapter 8 Anne's Legacy and of Clevy's story is one of remarkable fortune and resilience. She entered into a marriage with King Henry VIII that could have easily ended in disaster. Yet, she emerged from it with her dignity intact, a generous settlement, and the admiration of the English nobility. Anne's diplomatic skills and willingness to cooperate during her annulment endeared her to the English people, ensuring her lasting positive reputation and played a role in English politics and diplomacy throughout her life, facilitating alliances and maintaining good relations with her native Germany. She lived to see the reigns of four English monarchs, Henry VIII, Edward VI, Mary I, and Elizabeth I, and her influence persisted even into the reign of the last Tudor monarch. And of Cleves died on July 16, 1557, at 41. She never remarried, choosing instead to enjoy her independence and the wealth she had acquired through her marriage to Henry. She was laid to rest in Westminster Abbey, a final honor for a woman who had navigated the treacherous waters of Tudor politics with grace and grit. Conclusion Anne of Cleves, the fourth wife of Henry VIII, stands as a unique figure in the tumultuous history of the Tudor dynasty. Her marriage to Henry may have been brief and unconsummated, but it paved the way for an amicable divorce and a life of prosperity and influence in England. Anne's ability to adapt to changing circumstances, her diplomatic insight, and her unwavering commitment to peace and cooperation with England made her a valuable ally and a respected figure in her adopted country. 
Her legacy endures not only in the historical record but also in the enduring memory of a woman who turned what could have been a disastrous marriage into a story of good fortune and resilience.